Okay, continuing on from the previous video, um, we added this render mode, interactive server, and um, we had this stream rendering attribute from when we were treating this page as a, uh, when this was a static server-side rendered page. We actually don't need this. So if I, if I render this page or run this page, and go to my to-do list. We notice the behavior there. If I get rid of this now, it behaves the same way. So that stream rendering is only needed when you have a static rendered page. When you go when you have an interactive render mode, it does that automatically. So um, when, we, when we're going from static server-side rendering to a, a interactive server render mode, we can get rid of that, um, that attribute. Now, one behavior to notice, and you've probably seen this happen with each of these, is I go to the page and it renders, and then it renders again. You saw a blink there. Why does it do that? Well, there's this thing in Blazor um, called pre-rendering. And in the documentation, you'll want to read about pre-rendered components. And um, uh, one way of dealing with that is actually to turn off the render mode. And you can do that by changing how you call your render mode. So if I change this to this and I set pre-render to false, so that's what it was before. We just add to the render mode. We instantiate a new interactive server render mode rather than using, I, I guess, the injected one which allows us to set the pre-render attribute or parameter to false. And if we do that, watch what happens. We only get one render. Of course, notice that, and this is because I put a pretty sizable timer on it, it does It, it does give us the loading indicator now instead of uh, doing as fast of a render. But that may be preferable um, uh, to sh having this show all the information and then go away and then show it again. So a simple way of de dealing with pre-rendering is just to turn it off. Um, and that's valid if you don't really need... Um, you don't feel the need to, for pre-rendering. The, the advantage of pre-rendering is mostly SEO, search engine optimization. If you can get the data there quickly, uh, then you probably do want it to be pre-rendered. Now you can turn off um, pre-rendering for the entire site. Um, and if you go to, uh, where are we at? If we go to actually this documentation, sorry, wrong page. If you look up render modes, it, it's the chapter just before pre-rendering in the documentation. They talk about um, uh, turning off pre-rendering. And this will describe, um, this section will describe, explain what pre-rendering is. The important point here, it is enabled by default for interactive components. Um, and then it shows you how to, and this is where it gives you the documentation on how to uh, disable um, pre-rendering 
um, for different modes. So if you're setting interactive server render mode, you would um, you would instantiate a new interactive server mode and set the uh, pre-render parameter to false. Same thing with interactive WebAssembly or interactive auto. Um, you 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 just uh, change to the syntax when you you select that. Um, you can also disable um, it, you know, site wide. It gives you examples of that. But then you would be setting essentially a render mode for the entire site. So most likely you're going to be using this approach by per component. So if we go back to making this true, which um, we could just then go back to go back to interactive server mode. If I run this, let's make sure that uh, we are still functioning. Yep, and there we get our blip. So we, if you don't want to turn off. Um, pre-rendering and you want to do it and you want to take advantage of pre-rendering then what you need to do is is look at this article here on pre-rendered components. So this whole time I've been going to the .NET 8 Blazor documentation under web apps and it's mostly been in these two two uh, sections. So what we what this describes is how to persist application state from the pre-rendered component to the final rendered component. And um, <clears throat> this sample of code uh, shows how to do it. So what you're going to do is inject a persistent component state object here at the top. And then we need to change how we are um, doing our uninitialized. In general, we need to do the following things. <clears throat> so we're going to register we're going to use that application state object that we injected <clears throat> to register um, a method. And that method is where you're going to store your data. Now, right now here, you know, whatever you want, this would be an ideal place to maybe use a, a data, a DTO a data transfer object class that would hold you know, the things that you would need when you initialize the uh, page. Um, but it can be anything you want. And here it tells you that token is a st is the string name of the um, uh, of the type of whatever data you're storing. Name of is probably uh, the best way to do that so that it always stays consistent. And then the, the type is just the type of whatever this data is. So here what we're doing is we this gets converted into JSON and gets stored. Uh, anyone remember uh, with um, uh, the, the view state object that you had in, um, 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 in web forms? Well, it's kind of like that, I think. So this gets persisted as, a J, as JSON text, and uh, then... Um, uh, it's it's done as an asynchronous task. You register that method with reg register on persisting, and that will be called at the right point to restore your information. Then what you do is you check the application state, um, 
and you see if you have the data. If you um, are a if you are um, if you are able to get uh, the state, th then um, you can store and restore. They kind of do a double negative here. They do it. If you can't get it, then go get it. Otherwise, restore it. You could probably flip that around. Um, but uh, so if you get it, then restored is an object uh, variable that will that you can assign into your data type. It will be implicitly converted into your object. So that will take it from the JSON back out to your your data object. Otherwise, uh, what you're going to do is um, uh, you're going to to actually go get your data. So that way you only get your data once. So it would look like this. Um, I'm going to go in here and um, Got my pattern over on the right. List of to dos is the type, so to dos is going to be my data. Um, I will grab this piece here and throw it at the top. I need this this declaration here. I need a persistent state subscription object, and then I need a method to persist my data. And I need a uh, destructor. So I'm going to take those and I'm going to add those at the bottom here. Um, and I noticed this. Uh, it wouldn't let me... Um, uh, it says the containing interface doesn't dispose. And it wants, we, you know, it wants to make sure that the persistence encryption state is disposed. I'm thinking it, it may not be needed. But uh, not knowing what to do uh, for sure, I just um, threw it into a, a C sharp destructor. And had it run on the on destruction. So um, I'm not sure if this has to be done. I'm thinking when everything goes out of state, it should dispose. I would wonder why they did that. But um, just to make sure I did that. And then this will be our to-dos object. And then we need to specify the type. And I, and then they recommend actually just using name of uh, whatever your type is. So we get, why is it not happy? There we go. Okay, so this will persist my list as a JSON object. I've registered that method with this, and now I just need to um, just, it's a lot of extra code, but um, so you might want to turn it off if you don't really need this capability, but um, this is the this is the way to fully take advantage of um, pre-rendering. So probably easiest just to do this. This is my data collection part. I'll just throw that up here. Clean up my curly braces so it's not a complete mess. And let's see, so this will be my list of to do. This will be my name of. And so this, now, and then 
down here, what I'm doing is I'm saying, well, if if it's not, you know what? Let's just do this. Let's say, let's flip flop these. So, if we're able to take it from <laughs> JSON, from, from our view state, then, I'm sure that's the, that's the, the archaically wrong term, um, then we'll take the, if we can get it from view state, then we'll just, you, we'll take the restored object and throw it into deuce. If we are not able to get it from view state, then we will go to, and here we're simulating going to the database and getting our information. So, Yes. Now, let's see if this works. Go to the to-do, and it just shows up, and it just works. So that cleared up um, that blip. And you notice we don't even see loading. It um, happened so quickly um, on the server that... Um, um, even with the delay await, uh, we get our data very, uh, very rapidly. Um, let's put this to 5,000, see if we can, if it changes it. Okay, yeah, it does delay at this point, um, waiting to, to, to get it. But what we can do is put our stream rendering back in. So let's put attribute. And let's see what that does. There we have our loading indicator. And it doesn't render twice. And uh, so we have everything now. So put your app page directive. Add your end render mode. If you're doing interactive server and you, uh, and you have state that's being brought in asynchronously, then um, inject an application state provider. Um, set Enable stream rendering. And then... Write yourself a method to persist your data, whatever it is. Bring in a destructor to make sure that goes away and add a persisting component state description object here. And then you need to register that method with this pers register persisting. And then you need to check the application state object to see if you can get the data. If you can get the data out, you use that. If you can't, uh, you need you go and get your data. So that's basically what's going on here. Um, so it gets a little complex, but we are managing a lot of things that ordinarily would be complex to manage. If you wanted to do pre-rendering, if you wanted to get the advantage of that for search engine optimization, if you wanted to um, not have that blip when uh, it comes in, well, you kind of have to do all these things. So um, once you get used to the pattern, uh, probably not a big deal. And some of this could be abstracted out, I think. Um, <clears throat> maybe uh, thrown into a super class of some sort. Um, but, uh, um, um, but yes, that's uh, the pattern for using... Um, for for using the interactive server mode and handling um, persistent component state. So next time, uh, next uh, video, I will go over. Uh, I'll continue on and uh, get into the um, the, the 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 remaining uh, inter um, interactive modes. Thank you.